Okay, good morning. Welcome back. Uh, this morning we want to look at maybe improving our data input at the input stage of any calculation sheet. And we're going to do that by using the combo box, which was introduced in uh, MathCAD Prime uh, 7.0. And so to do that, or to demonstrate that, I've opened up a worksheet that I, I did some time ago that predated the use of that combo box. Uh, and here we see the input of a bunch of information with respect to the cross section of a reinforced concrete beam. And we define the various uh, bar parameters for the top steel and the bottom steel. And uh, if you know anything about uh, concrete design, you know that we have a bunch of standard bar sizes that we use, which we refer to by their nominal diameter. And so wouldn't it be great if instead of looking up that table and explicitly defining uh, their parameters in here, we could just have that table included in MathCAD, and that's what we're going to do with the combo box this morning. So uh, let me uh, modify this sheet. I'm just going to get rid of some stuff. So here's where we were commenting that. I'm going to move some of this stuff out of the way so I can make my spa myself some space uh, to do those modifications. And uh, we can make more changes as we go along. So up here, what I want to do is I want to uh, introduce the combo box, which will read the information in to a vector uh, variable, a vector variable uh, for the selected bar size. And so I'm going to call it bar prime because we're talking about the top steel bar and we're going to define it. And now we're going to use the combo box to define it. And so the combo box, if we go up here, uh, we go to the input output tab, we'll find the combo box uh, over a little bit, uh, part, uh, a little more than halfway across, and we're going to choose insert. And we see this table comes up, and now what we have to do is we have to put in that data table or the data set uh, based on the bars that we're going to have. And so uh, I'll just start by doing the first one. So the first one is going to be a 10 M bar. So the 10 is the nominal diameter. These are different bars. Uh, and then what we need to do is we need a couple different columns where we're going to have the area for the bar and the diameter. And so what we need to do is we need to add another column. Now, all of this is done as if it's a matrix, which effectively it is. And so these are the commands we can use to expand the number of rows and the number of columns. So I'm going to insert a, a row to the right, and we're going to put our diameter over here. So we have to give it the units that we're going to assign to it. And a 10 M bar has a diameter of 11.3 millimeters. And then we have to have the area in the first one. Now, this is the first challenge that we get because I, you know, when I tried to do this uh, to make it millimeters squared and it just doesn't quite work. This doesn't get interpreted correctly. So the workaround that I found is to basically define a new unit uh, that it would recognize. And so I'm going to put in MMS, uh, so millimeters squared. But before I can make this effective, I'm going to have to define that as a, a unit outside. And I'll do that just as soon as I'm finished putting in the information. And so 100 millimeter squared is the area of that bar. So now I need to add the successive bars that we're going to choose from. So again, I'm going to go insert below, add another row, which is also the shift enter key and we can enter in 15 M. It has an area of 200 and I'm just tabbing between the columns and a diameter of 16 millimeters. Now, again, we're going to have to, so shift enter, uh, will put us down to another row and I'm going to go ahead and just proliferate this table. You don't need to see me typing all that in and then uh, we'll tune back in once we have the table completed. Okay, there we go. We uh, have managed to complete the table. We've got all of the, the data in. So these are the standard bars that we want to choose from. And so the combo box itself is pretty much done. Now we're going to have to use it. And the first thing we're going to have to do to make it usable is to make sure that this unit, MMS, uh, is recognized as the equivalent of millimeters squared. Okay, so let's 
click out of this and you see it's not completely happy right now. And so what we're, I'm just going to go up here to the top and I'm going to go MMS. And if I go up to the math tab, I can choose the label because I want this to be a unit and you see it changes the color to the color that we recognize as uh, units and I'm going to define it as the equivalent of millimeters squared and so now you see that that red bar is saying it didn't understand the units is gone and uh, it's giving us uh, good information and so we can go down here just in its usability when we choose a number it's going to return a vector, which is the row for that bar or the, that data. Now it's actually comes in a column actually. So let's just see how that works. So I'm just going to put down here, I'm going to go bar prime is equal to, and you'll see the information that's coming. Okay, so if I go up here, you see if I choose 10M, it returns a column vector, which has the information associated with the row in the combo box and we can choose any bar and that's what we're going to get. Now we don't necessarily want this uh, to be uh, used in a, a vector. Uh, we can manipulate that vector, we can do a bunch of things or we can just deal with the various elements of the vector and that's what I'm going to choose to do in this instance. So let's get rid of that and so what we want to do is we want our A prime bar. So, so these are explicit definitions. We want to get rid of these. Uh, we don't need those anymore. What we want to do is we want that to take on the value of bar prime, but specifically the first element of bar prime. And so we use the uh, square bracket, left-hand square bracket, and that gives us a subscript which recognizes the indice in the vector. And in this case, we want the first one. Now, of course, we know it starts numbering zero and then goes on from there. Uh, I'm going to change that. So let's uh, choose one and then we hit our equal sign. And of course, we're getting the wrong one here, but I'm going to change my origin. You can do that in a couple spots. You can go up uh, to the calculation tab and choose to change your origin there, or you can make it explicit in your uh, In the field, we change origin equals one, and now we're getting the information that we want. And so this is, let me give myself some space, millimeters squared. And so depending on which bar we choose, we're now getting the area prime of the bar defined. And so what we need to do, oh, we messed that one up, is go over here and do exactly the same thing. So we take away the explicit calculation, we take on the value from the vector. And in this case, we choose element two, set it equal to, and we have our millimeters. And so we have the diameter of the bar. And so now, as I change my bar, it changes the values of the parameters of that bar. And so that's doing exactly what we wanted to do. All we need to do now is repeat this uh, effort down here for the bottom steel. And we'll make that really simple. So first thing I want to do is I'm going to copy and paste my combo box down here. And of course, we don't want to use bar prime. We're just going to use bar because we're down in the bottom steel. And so that's fine. And instead of probably the easiest way to do that is I'm going to calculate copy and delete these, paste these, and just remove the prime, remove the prime. And now, so if we choose 10M, which was the original choice up here, and we choose 20M down here, everything updates. And so we can copy and paste this. We can put it into a whole bunch of different, uh, whenever we have a concrete cross section, we can choose, uh, copy and paste our, our uh, combo box into those spreadsheets or into those worksheets and take advantage of the fact now that we have this table built in. So that's the use of the combo box. It can be really useful, a little bit of effort to, to set it up in the first instance, uh, but really, really useful 
uh, on the back end. It uh, makes uh, our, the automation of our spreadsheets uh, that much easier, less requirement for comments. We see explicitly what type of bar we're using, and we know that the information is going to be correct because it's built right into that uh, data set. So uh, hopefully that was useful to you and uh, didn't take too much of your time. So uh, good luck with that.